I can hire a really beautiful actress to look into the lens and seduce every guy in the audience. This is a completely different animal, let me tell you. So we're, so we're just beginning to explore what we can do with it. Yeah. Right, so you would go to this with the eye line matching, right? Maybe. And then my reverse would be like this? Maybe. Don't know yet. Don't know yet. Okay. I just really believe that movies can be much bigger and better than they are. And I, I as a director, I'm, I'm just too frustrated by normal movies at 24 frames on little postage stamp screens. I think it's a waste of my time to make a movie for that medium. I want to yes. increase the power of the medium so I can tell a story that's a different kind of story. The cost of a normal feature film may be less. You can say 25 because of time? Everything. Time, efficiency, smaller crew, smaller stage, smaller facilities, faster shooting, everything. Is this moving toward holography? Well, it's not really holography, but yeah, I think it's going to be as close as a three-dimensional experience can be to reality. That's our objective is to go to a high, as high a bandwidth, a high frame rate, high brightness, high clarity, high field of view, everything we can do to make you feel like you're inside the movie, not just looking at the movie. We think we can make a new kind of, hopefully, very profitable form of entertainment by actually building new theaters that I wouldn't even call a theater, that's why I mentioned a holodeck. I want you to go into a place that's like entering a space capsule or an envelope or some amazing three-dimensional thing that's gonna happen and the experience is going to be more like going to Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas than it is to go to a movie theater. I frankly think the multiplex theater is now on your tablet, on your iPhone, on your computer. What's going on the stage right now in terms of being able to put actors into a virtual set in real time? We took motion tracking technology to a level never before used in broadcast TV. Developing the 4D technology at CBC has been a fascinating process. It put sensors on my hand in a specific place and finally ultimately created a mold so it's very easy to put the sensors on in the right place and the computer is looking for that pattern of sensors on my hand and that pattern of sensors when it goes through a certain zone that we've defined triggers an action by the computer and graphically creates uh, some of the graphics that we're using to show the data. Ask Americans, do you think you should keep those tax cuts for the wealthy or end them? Take a look at the numbers and end them right there. 46%. How about keep them? A very slight edge there, probably within the margin. At CNBC, 16 high-definition grayscale cameras integrated in the lighting grid create a volume footprint of approximately 20 feet by 30 feet. Within this area, a steady cam fitted with a configuration of reflectors can be tracked in X, Y, and Z space orientation with sufficient resolution as never before. This is the first tool that I've ever had that puts me where I want to be, which is inside the data and lets me show people what it is that they really, really need to see. Paul Combs company, Unreal, is now located here at this studio, and he's exploring the future of all this virtual set technology. And the broadcast industry, which you see right here, of CNBC and ESPN and stuff like that, are actually at the forefront of, of applying motion capture technology and virtual sets in real time on live broadcast television. I can tell you that it's much more challenging and much more difficult to do than post-production on Avatar. It takes you back that. Our objective is to see if we can make movies with higher impact and greater production value. It's possible that this ShowScan digital process could solve a number of serious problems that have plagued the movie industry since its inception. The whole world has adapted to 24 frames a second in a movie theater. That's what a movie texture is like. That's what people expect. Every filmmaker wants to put exciting action on the screen, but at 24 frames a second, just when you want the most excitement is when you get the worst blur. You ready? Speed. On the left is a timeline of 24 frames representing one second, divided into 24 frames and 24 shutter closures. On the right is the same one second period, now divided into 120 frames without any shutter closures. When you shoot a movie at 24 frames a second, half the time the shutter's closed and half the time the shutter's open. And so half the action is lost forever. It's simply not recorded while the shutter's closed. Now with electronic cinematography, it's no longer necessary to think of movies as a rigid series of photographs. Having shot our original images at 120 frames per second, we can combine three frames into one and delete the next two to get 24 frames per second. The crispness of the 60 frame derived from 120 frame is strikingly 
not blurred. We get into blending and bringing in 60 frame material into a 24 frame larger frame. If you read a script, all that stuff happens in one line. Deckard flies from A to B. These are things that defy literature, and they defy writing in a script. And that's why I don't even want people to read my script. I want people to believe in my vision for what we can make as a movie. And read the script later after we can show you what this movie is going to feel like, look like, and be like. That's why this whole thing is here in order to develop a prototype demonstration of a scene from a film I want to make, which is a science fiction uh, action adventure film that we're going to shoot right here and show it right here. And you're going to have an experience that's going to be way better than IMAX, way better than Cinerama, way better than any 3D you ever saw. And we think it's going to be very participatory and you're going to feel like you're actually on the adventure yourself. That's the whole idea. Could you go to the next Oh, sure. Thank you. I heard about how the new avatars or wants to be shot in 48 frames per second and I thought, gosh, that's going to look soap opera like what he had said and then now I know exactly how that's going to work and that, that seems great. I'm very glad that there are minds out there that have that, <laughs> those capabilities. I think he has an interest in movies as a sensory experience and I have an interest in as a cultural experience. And, uh, yeah, so, but it was fascinating. He yeah. knows his stuff, though. I mean, he's, yeah, he's a good. I will for sure. There's a lot to be respected, but it's just different, so different. Funny enough, as big as he is and as, as, as large as his career is, I see him as an independent filmmaker, given what he's doing with technology. Well, this is just craziness. <laughs> uh, how to grab shots for free in New York <laughs> and not get arrested.